first good morning all uh, uh, i am mukesh from zaidas sinovya welcome you all to the online learning platform aruma dg conclave today we having with us a very well known consulting rheumatologist dr piyush joshi welcome sir and thank you very much for our time today sir uh, uh, dr piyush joshi is a dnb in rheumatology and immunity currently uh, practicing at home uh, hop uh, rheumatology and hematology oncology clinic bapunagar at amdavad dr piyush joshi has also practicing in avron hospital navrangpura and uh, sterling hospital amdavad today he will take us uh, to the very interesting topic uh, chikungunya arthritis please not if you have any question you can type uh, during the uh, session in the chat box at the bottom of the screen and we will take uh, all the queries at the end of the session thank you very much sir and over to you sir yeah hi am i audible properly yes sir yeah okay uh, i need to share my screen uh, can can you stop sharing yours yes sir okay So, yeah. Share. Okay. okay, just a minute. You ready? Okay. Yeah. Am I visible properly now? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay. hi hi to all of you uh, today my topic is slightly difficult and maybe may, uh, very current and present what we are facing right now uh, it is a chikungunya arthritis that i am going to talk about right now uh, so chikungunya arthritis is a disease that caused by infection with chikungunya virus it began in africa in 2004 and over the uh, last 15 years it has spread to more than 100 countries in four continents so it is an chikungunya arthropathy is a, one of the only chronic arthritic viral chronic arthritis which is there and it affects multiple cell types and it is uh, coming to the level of pandemic right now so it it was starting as an epidemic but more and more countries are affected and it is now being considered to be a pandemic also so my present and our presentation outline will be we will be knowing our enemy better so we'll be knowing more about chikungunya virus so then the, uh, talk about some epidemic epidemiology of it how it progress and do the pathogenesis how clinically it present what is the diagnosis and treatment uh, in special situation how we manage them and in future what lies ahead so there is a japanese proverb that says that always know your enemy better and you know yourself and then you can fight the battles much better and without many catastrophic so we should know our enemy much much better so we know it is a virus but among virus we don't know many things so the baltimore classification of virus basically compri- uh, classifies the virus in three things I- either it is a dna virus rna virus or it is a reverse transcriptase using virus so our virus uh, there is a chikungunya virus lies in the single stranded rna virus there is a positive sense R- uh, uh, virus and that is uh, that comes in the class 4 so this difference is basically how the virus forms its uh, nuclear pro, uh, material so if it is a dna it, it goes to the uh, nucleus and forms the dna material if it is an rna virus it can go to the uh, nucleus and form the dna or it can form directly from the mrna in the cytoplasm so this uh, uh, this one figure comprises all the things the first is double stranded dna virus Second is single stranded DNA virus. The the group three, four, and five are the RNA virus, and uh, group six and seven they are the reverse transcriptase kind kind of virus. So, amongst the patient with the group four virus, that is alpha virus family, you can see there are many viruses. Now, there is certain common characteristic that is there. They all cause fever, rash, arthritis, and encephalitis. So you will see the this among all the viruses and also chikungunya can also cause all of them 
so chikungunya is a mosquito borne alpha virus it is a single strand positive sense rna virus there are no, no. four virus lineages why this is important because when you are forming a vaccine there is a vaccine is available only to one lineage so we we are going to need the vaccine which will be needed for all four lineages this is an african west african east central south african and indian ocean lineage and on an average when a person gets chikungunya they lose around 10 working days so the uh, epidemic has started the initially the chikungunya virus was present in monkeys so the cycle was from mosquito it goes to monkey and from monkey again goes to mosquito it was not coming to the humans but the first reported case of chikungunya happened in 2004 where the chikungunya virus was uh, first isolated in uh, lamu island in kenya and from there it is spread to all over the world in india it started in around 2005 and still it is persisting every third or fourth year we are having an epidemic of chikungunya in our uh, population the endemicity of uh, disease remains but every third or fourth year we are having an epidemic also so what transmits this virus so basically aedes aegypti and aedes albopictus these are the two mosquitoes which uh, transmit the virus uh, in africa and america aedes aegypti is much more common in india we find uh, aedes albopictus also plays a major role so you can uh, see this uh, mosquito by uh, they have a black body with a white stripes and they are a day biters so uh, they mainly feed on you during the daytime and early dawn time so once the virus uh, the mosquito bites you the virus goes inside your skin uh, in the skin fibroblast it goes and it, it starts to divide so it grows in the inside the skin fibroblast from there it goes to the uh, your blood system and to it goes to the all over the body so it goes to your brain where it goes to the epithelial and endothelial cells it go to the lymphoid tissues in joint in fibroblast uh, chondrocytes and osteo osteoblast in muscle liver everywhere it goes once inside the cell what happens is that uh, it gets receptor mediated endocytosis that you can see here then from there the uh, uh, nuclear material of the virus get replicated inside the cytoplasm and the golgi membrane have a capsid formation and both they combine and they do the virus shredding now how it affect the uh, how the virus do the damage so if you see the initial uh, involvement happens in the synovial fibroblast macrophage monocyte chondrocyte and osteocytes from there various molecules are secreted now because of the covid we know the il6 and tnf very commonly now so the il6 and tnf play a major role at the start and they do the uh, they lead to the chronic phase that is the recruitment of the other cells which leads to the chronicity that is a th1 type of hyper helper cells nk cells nk t cells th17 cells which play a major role and from there various molecules uh, uh, comes into picture and then they drives the autoimmunity for a longer time so if you see the initial response is interferon response now this is very important the interferon beta is a protective for viral uh, virus in our body now interferon beta works very best at around 37 to 38 degree centigrade uh, the peripheral joint have slightly lower temperature of around 2 degree which reduces the interferon activity by 40% and that's why the arthritis affection is mainly peripheral and you see more and more people coming with the peripheral joint arthropathy rather than central arthropathy because, because of the varied interferon response in patient with chikungunya Uh, after fifth day, the antibodies come into picture and T cell come into picture. Now, uh, if you see the initial is inter interferon, but later on interleukin six and TNF plays a major role in deciding the uh, clinical presentation of disease. Now, amongst the clinical presentation, initially the viremia happens. From the day of viremia, around second day, you will start to have fever. Uh, viremia uh, from the day of bite, the viremia happens after fifth day. the fever happen around 5 to 7 day arthritis also happens at the same time the fever is generally high grade in nature uh, generally it lasts for 4 to 5 days but most in most cases it mostly lasts for 2 to 3 days only arthritis is generally sudden onset in, involves all the joint at once it's a symmetrical arthritis like rheumatoid arthritis but the peripheral involvement is much more common the hand and feet involvement is more much more common in this case now the uh, 
there is a uh, cap in capacitive arthritis means patient is lied very okay in the night and in morning the patient wakes up and they have a stiffness he cannot get out of the bed this generally do not happen with rheumatoid arthritis the very common with the chikungunya arthritis the myalgia and skin rash happens on fourth or fifth day skin rash we have to mention very clearly here now this is a maculopapular rash that happens on fourth or fifth day what happens that someone uh, comes with chikungunya you start treatment you give nsaid the next day they came with rash so we think it is a drug rash no no on fourth or fifth day it is not drug rash is a chikungunya rash and you should not stop nsaid because of this rash it is because of the chikungunya it's a maculopapular rash that mainly involves trunk and extremities uh, generally the face uh, the, in the face uh, palms and soles will be exempt from the rash so that that's how you can differentiate the chikungunya rash from the drug rash uh, so initial 4 uh, 5 days you can detect by pcr once the fifth or sixth day happens you should not do pcr tests then you should do the chikungunya igm test and from around 15 day you should do a igg test and not igm test also so in uh, the incubation period is around 7 days from uh, the day of onset you will have fever you might have other features like headache retroorbital pain gastrointestinal symptoms you can have lymphadenopathy you can have you might have a lymphopenia thrombocytopenia uh, increase in creatinine kinase and hypocalcemia uh, in in subacute phase just a minute huh? in in subacute phase you will not have all these features in chronic phase you will have post post infectious chronic rheumatism you will have musculoskeletal pain and problems you might have asthenia and depression and you might have headache so in acute phase generally last in young patient it late is much more severe uh, there is a high grade fever rash and arthritis uh, along with that there might be hepatitis there might be muscle uh, involvement in uh, in myalgia there might be spleen and adenopathy which is there in in cns there might be gulen barre syndrome also and there might be encephalitis in such patients so in acute phase what you see other than the routine symptom you might develop diarrhea and edema which might be the other presentation that patient might be coming to you in atypical acute stage you might get neurological thing like encephalitis gbs meningoencephalitis also so patient can come in a, a drowsy state or altered mental state as also in cardiovascular state patient can come with myocarditis arrhythmias and hypotension this is much more common in older age people uh, in renal patient might come with a nephritis and proteinuria there might be respiratory failure and dyspnea and pneumonia which might be there in uh, patient alongside in severe acute chikungunya arthritis you might develop multi organ failure so there might be uh, multiple organs which are fail and uh, there is much more mortality in this patients generally requires hospitalization and this patients are generally elderly and diabetic in nature now chronic phase generally comes in around 25% patient at 2 months and 15 percent patient at the end of two years also so the patient will have an arthralgia or arthritis alopecia depression fatigue and mood disorders also uh, factor which predispose the patient to the chronic uh, disease are comorbidities like an osteoarthritis and diabetes old age people more than 35 45 uh, years age then this people have more problem with chronicity high viremia and severe disease during acute stage also predispose them other autoimmune disease the patient with like a psoriasis or other kind of autoimmune disease they are more prone for chronicity of disease so how you diagnose basically a typical clinical criteria where you have an acute onset of fever with arthritis or arthralgia in epidemiological criteria means uh, the person is residing in epidemiological area or coming from there in last 15 days and laboratory criteria where you do a uh, viral rna detection or a igm igg detection so you can see here if it is less than 6 days always do an rt pcr if it is positive you uh, you have diagnosed if it is negative you go for an igm test and if the igm test is positive then it is it is positive if it is negative then most it is not chikungunya unless you are clinically very suspicious about it now coming to some special situation like pregnancy and chikungunya 
So in pregnancy, the chikungunya virus can be transmitted through placenta in 50% patients. So uh, in third trimester, if the patient has become pregnant, there's a chances for that neonatal transmission there. When the neonate gets infected, there's a fever, poor feeding, rim rash and limb edema which happens. There's a, they found that there's a, a neurodevelopment delay which happens at two years in such people much more common. Uh, if the mother develops antibody at the end of five, fifth or sixth day, the antibody also gets transmitted to the baby and which helps in uh, protection of the baby. So if the they tr what they are trying to do is there is less than 34 weeks pregnancy, they are trying to prolong the pregnancy for two, one or two more weeks. And that's that how you can have a lesser effect of the virus on the baby. In children, uh, the chikungunya is the asymptomatic infections are much more common. Uh, otherwise, they are very similar to adults, but the uh, severity is much more less and uh, chronic fear is not very common. So they are blessed in the nature. So what they say is that in children and in, in, in neonates, in, in old population, the interferon response is not that strong. And that's why the viral protection doesn't happen that good in the initial phase. And that's why neonates and elderly people, they have a much more severe disease at, at the start. And that's why they have more prone for mortality. In comorbidities in chikungunya, the special mention should be diabetes. So in diabetes, what happens is that the glycemic controls deteriorates uh, during the chikungunya. So the many people will have a high sugars, not because of steroid, but otherwise also. So the more severity and duration of disease that happen, and there are more complications, and AKI is much more common in diabetic patients. And mortality is also higher in patients with the uncontrolled diabetes with chikungunya. So uh, now coming to chikungunya and co-infections. So uh, looking at that, so dengue and chikungunya, they can be co-infected in patient in around 12.5% patient in a trial. So this is a very huge number because if the patient is having dengue along with chikungunya, you should be avoiding NSAID for 40, till 48 hours patient uh, until the patient becomes afebrile. If you give that the chance for Dengue hemorrhagic shock syndrome is much more, and that's why you should avoid it. If such patients have more diarrhea, rash, arthritis, and platelets are low. The mortality is also on a higher side. Chikungunya with HIV is a more of lymphopenia, and chikungunya with Zika is more of an arthritis. The only uh, thing that is good is that when chikungunya happens with malaria, the less severe chikungunya arthritis. Now, there's one theory which is going on, and that is the as the plasmodium falciparum uh, has incidence has gone down in Africa and in uh, tropical countries like India, uh, the chance for chikungunya has gone up. So initially, apparently also we might have some chikungunya, but uh, now the chikungunya which is coming is much more severe because we don't have that good falciparum coverage in our uh, population. So how chikungunya chronic arthritis differs from rheumatoid arthritis? So rheumatoid arthritis, the joint involvement is almost all joints can be involved. Chikungunya, mainly peripheral joints are involved. Central joints are much less involved. In spine, the cervical spine is much more common in chikungunya, while uh, in ching, uh, sorry, cervical spine is common in rheumatoid. In chikungunya, is lumbar spine which is involved. Erosions are much common in RA because the neutrophils are there. In chikungunya, generally the neutro, monocyte macrophages are there. That's why you see less erosions. Limb edema is much more common with chikungunya arthritis than rheumatoid arthritis. So if you see a patient with much more limb edema, think of chikungunya first. So how we treat chikungunya? So it's a very complex question because we don't have any answers yet. Uh, after around 15 years of disease also, we don't know exactly how to treat. So there are various trials which has happened. But in acute phase, in zero to three to four weeks, you give paracetamol, NSAIDs, you give pregabalin and duroxetine like drugs. You give uh, morphine and codeine like opioid drugs. You can use low dose steroid at the start. They found the chikungunya virus to be present inside the joint at the start. In initial four weeks, they found that. And that's why you avoid giving any drug or large dose steroid at the start so that you can avoid having problems of the more viral replication inside the joint and more viral persistent inside the joint. So to prevent that, you do not give higher dose of steroid, you do not use any DMARs at the start. So they have used etanercept, uh, a TNF blocker at the in acute stage in mice. And they found that the mouse which receive etanercept, they have higher mortality. 
because the intercept will prevent the TNF and that uh, increase the virus replication and causes more systemic symptom and lead to mortality. In subacute phase, uh, NACID steroid acetaminophen should be used. Uh, there was a uh, doubt that we should use hydroxychloroquine or not. So there, among the three trials, one trial was positive. The second trial was negative. The third trial showed is an increased chance for chronicity or increased chance for viral replication in subacute phase also. So if you feel the patient is having more benefit than risk, then you should use, but otherwise avoid as HCQ is also in subacute phase. In chronic phase, when it is more than eight weeks, uh, it behaves like early rheumatoid arthritis. So uh, you should treat like with DMARDS, you will be using methotrexate. So there are around 140 case reports of methotrexate use and among that six retrospective trial where they use methotrexate in a dose of 15 to 25 milligram, they found the methotrexate is an effective drug in a, preventing the symptoms of uh, chronic chikungunya arthritis. There was one more trial where they used methotrexate, sulfasazine and hydroxychloroquine as a combination. They found it is effective. HCQS as an alone has not been found effective in a patient with a chronic chikungunya arthritis. So there was much zeal regarding HCQS also in COVID and also in chikungunya, but at the end they found that it is not very effective in patient in such patient, and we should not be using it alone as far as possible. So there are ex experimental treatment which are there. So etanercept they have found to be negative uh, trial was just there. Tocilizumab and reduximab has not been tested, but tocilizumab will be effective. If you see the recent COVID data also, the tocilizumab they give in a, uh, as an IL-6 blocker in a, a COVID also, but in specific situations, especially when there's immune responses there and they want to prevent that. Similarly, in COVID also, when we are seeing the immune response, we might be thinking of tocilizumab, but there's no trial for that. Abatacept has been found as a CTLA-4 blocker. It has been found to preventing the chronicity of chikungunya. There is a, one more plasma, like neutralizing plasma, which was found, but generally by the time patient comes to you, by around fifth or sixth day, there is IgM production, which is already there. So it doesn't uh, help in preventing the disease. There are two more drugs which are found to be useful, but the trial are still remaining, tomatidine and bindirate. So they may, might be the future in uh, case, such case. Now, when you cannot treat properly, what you can do, you can vaccinate the patient. So uh, the vaccines, uh, the COVID vaccine has come in one year, but the chikungunya vaccine has taken around 15 years and still it is not coming to uh, life, I can say. So the four vaccine is in phase one trial, three, two vaccine in phase two and one in phase three trial. Now, the problem here is slightly different. The chikungunya is an epidemic so with endemicity. So you cannot predict who will get disease and the trial for vaccine is not very slightly complicated in that sense. Uh, only one serotype the vaccine provides the protection. So there are four serotypes. So at the end, we might have to go for polyvalent vaccine, which might be available in near future. There's one more uh, innovative thing that they have done. There's a one bacteria, gram-negative bacteria, uh, Vulbachia, which infects the Aedes aegypti and kills them. So that's how it can prevent the spread of chikungunya. So it's a possible thing that can be done in future. So treatment summary, uh, what I can say is in acute phase, avoid hydroxychloroquine, other DMARs, uh, low-dose steroid and NSAID paracetamol are safe in early disease. So then four weeks, you can think of that. If it is more than six to eight weeks, treat like an early rheumatoid arthritis with methotrexate, sulfasazine, hydroxychloroquine. How long you will give? No one knows, but yes, uh, we should give a time duration of around six months to two years. Uh, so that is how, how long you will uh, be using the drug may consider DMARD in people at risk for chronicity is when the you think you know that the people person has diabetes the person has very severe acute disease those are the patient you start maybe in subacute may start in subacute or chronic phase early on so that they might uh, you might be able to stop them to grow into the chronic phase other autoimmune disease like psoriasis or uh, they predispose the patient to have an arthritis any questions from my end Thank you. Uh, sir, thank you very much for uh, today's session, sir. Very nice session and have got uh, enlightened uh, today's session, sir.
there are uh, there are some uh, few questions sir dr kinnar avasya asking one question sir uh, there is sir. any role of curcumin in uh, chikungunya arthritis sir yes so there are there are case reports of use of curcumin in uh, chikungunya arthritis but they are not very strong so curcumin basically works in a, as an antioxidant so uh, there was small trial where they found that curcumin might be effective in preventing the chronicity but one more trial has failed to show any benefit so we exactly do not know but the, it might be effective but there are no data to support my claim yes thank you sir uh, second question sir dr kumar is uh, asking uh, what is viral arthritis and how can we diagnose so the viral arthritis is very typical when a patient comes to you with maybe fever or feverish feeling and acute onset arthritis so the any patient with rheumatoid arthritis will not have in a day involvement of 10 15 joints here the person with come with incapacitating arthritis in a day in night person has slept normally and in morning when he wakes up he will be like that i cannot get up it is so severe and it is so acute and it is so incapacitating if that happens then you always start thinking that is it a viral arthritis or not if it is within uh, 15 it is within 6 days do an rt pcr it is more than 6 days do an igm test and that's how you diagnose a viral arthritis so many viruses can cause that but mostly chikungunya is the most prevalent virus dengue dengue itself also can cause viral arthritis zika can also cause viral arthritis almost all alpha viruses can cause uh, viral arthritis but much more common the most common culprit is chikungunya okay sir thank you very much sir and uh, very sure. nice and wonderful sessions today and thank you very much all the doctors uh, for attending and giving us today time uh, and attend wonderful session today thank sure. you okay thank you thank you very much